many educators believe that critical thinking skills are the most important outcomes of higher education. But what is it actually? And how do you measure it in such a way that both engages faculty to evaluate their own methodology and improve student achievement? Traditionally, critical thinking has been characterized by the ability to evaluate and question formal arguments and conclusions. That is to say, what is called formal reasoning. But the concept of critical thinking has evolved in contemporary use to also encompass the ability to evaluate ideas and plans for solving problems, as well as evaluate one's own understanding of a particular issue. Thus, the skills of evaluating information, problem solving, effective communication, creative thinking, and lifelong learning are now frequently associated with critical thinking. Why is that so important? For one thing, these very skills are what have been characterized as 21st century skills, the higher order thinking skills every student needs to compete in the ever-changing global economy. For another, the explosion of information, some of it misleading or downright false, on the internet and through other media sources makes it absolutely essential that we equip our students with the tools to evaluate the soundness and validity of what they will encounter and to use it effectively. So it stands to reason that if critical thinking is an important outcome, then we must find a way to measure the success or failure of our teaching methods designed to achieve it. This is not only an issue of accountability, it is first and foremost an issue of improving our own efforts. And truth is, how we assess determines what students learn. For example, if instructors tend to assess rote retention of factual information, then students will naturally pursue the goal of memorization rather than developing critical thinking skills, such as those associated with the higher order thinking skills outlined in Bloom's classic taxonomy of learning. The challenge until now, though, has been how do we accurately assess critical thinking skills? How do you find a set of common skills that transcends disciplines? And how do you assess those skills in ways that are both reliable and valid? The CAT, or the Critical Thinking Assessment Test, is the culmination of a lengthy process that began in 2000 and was partially supported by the National Science Foundation to develop, refine, and validate a new faculty-driven assessment tool. Begun by Tennessee Technological University and further refined by faculty from a diverse array of institutions and disciplines and with guidance from experts in cognitive learning sciences and assessment, the CAT instrument is now being used nationally by a wide variety of institutions. The CAT is a one-hour exam with a variety of engaging questions that emulate a diversity of real-world tasks for which critical thinking is essential. One part of the test emulates many features of real-world problem-solving, including evaluating the relevance of information that might be obtained from an internet or database search, and then using that information to solve a problem. Unlike many standardized tests, that rely on multiple choice questions, CAT more accurately reveals students' underlying thought processes when confronted with real-world problems by relying on short essay answers to assess critical thinking. The test is scored in workshop settings by faculty members of the student's own institution. This is perhaps the most significant aspect of the tool. By assessing student performance using a faculty-driven instrument, CAT effectively closes the loop in assessment and quality improvement. The assessment process itself increases faculty awareness, not only of student weaknesses, but also of the effectiveness of their own teaching practices, and the discussion and adaptation of more effective practices are a clear natural outgrowth. This drives improved student learning. These are the skill areas CAT is designed to assess. Evaluating information, creative thinking, learning and problem solving, and communication. While faculty in each discipline do not necessarily consider all of these skills to be essential components of critical thinking, most faculty find at least eight of the 12 skills to be important components of critical thinking. But what makes CAT a valid assessment of critical thinking skills? 
considerable work has been done to establish CAT's validity. Faculty across a range of disciplines and institutions rated the questions in the assessment as valid measures of critical thinking. In addition to having high face validity, we compared student performance on the test with other measures of academic performance and measures that might reveal critical thinking skills. Performance on the CAT instrument is moderately correlated with other measures of general academic performance, such as the ACT and SAT. Slightly higher correlations were observed between performance on the CAT and two existing multiple choice tests that target a more limited set of critical thinking skills. Also, performance on the CAT correlates with several important topics on the National Survey of Student Engagement. There is a significant negative correlation between CAT performance and the extent students think his or her courses emphasize rote retention. In contrast, CAT performance positively correlates with an institution's emphasis on critical thinking and real-world problem-solving, and whether they have a culminating senior experience. CAT performance also positively correlates with the number of books students read on their own. All in all, these findings help support the validity of the CAT instrument. Another feature of CAT is that it is adaptable to a variety of assessment tasks. CAT is sensitive enough to detect changes over a four-year program of study or during a single college course. Moreover, national user norms have been developed for both community colleges and four-year institutions. Consider this sample question. As you can see, students are continually prompted to explore deeper levels of critical thinking with a succession of probes. The questions thus afford the faculty graders numerous opportunities to explore students' abilities and weaknesses, which can be both surprising and alarming. For example, 20 to 30 percent of senior level students think data like that presented in the sample question strongly support the scientist's theory. But how does CAT ensure accuracy and reliability? Essay answers are historically difficult to grade consistently from instructor to instructor. Prior to administering the CAT, institutional representatives must participate in a train the trainer workshop where they acquire the skills to train their own faculty to conduct scoring sessions at their institution. A detailed scoring guide and training module has also been painstakingly developed to guide the scoring of each question. Moreover, a combined training scoring procedure has been developed to apply this scoring rubric in an effective and efficient manner. And once the test is taken, each question is evaluated by a minimum of two faculty scorers. If those scores do not agree, then a third faculty scorer is used. Finally, to ensure each institution is accurately scoring the tests, the Center for Assessment and Improvement of Learning rescores a random subset of tests from each institutional scoring session. Feedback is then provided to institutions. The CAT is being used by a range of institutions from community colleges to four-year universities, including public, private, Ivy League, and research institutions. These institutions are using the CAT to evaluate the effects of instructional approaches, the outcomes of a single course experience, and the impact of an entire four-year course of study on students' critical thinking skills. It is also compatible with a variety of sampling strategies. Thus far, no cultural or gender bias and no ceiling or floor effects have been found. CAT is designed to be a cost-effective way to accurately and consistently assess the critical thinking skills that the majority of educators across the country regard as the most important outcome of an undergraduate education. CAT provides a better understanding of students' underlying thought processes when confronted with real-world problems. And more importantly, CAT engages faculty in the scoring of student responses which not only increases awareness of student weaknesses, but also stimulates the discussion of methods to improve student learning. As such, CAT contributes not only to the assessment of critical thinking skills, but also to the development of both faculty and students.
This type of faculty development experience can transform instruction and student learning. To learn more about this innovative new tool, or to locate a regional training workshop, contact the Center for Assessment and Improvement of Learning at Tennessee Tech, or visit www.criticalthinkingtest.org. Thank you.